brought franking to a new level. He created a car seat costume and surprised unsuspecting drive through employees. Hello. <laughs> Holy crap. What? Oh, 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 oh. Are you video camera guys? All right, thank you. Oh. You believe in magic? Yeah. It's gonna appear that I'm walking on water. For this video, I'm gonna be going to a drive-thru headless. I'm gonna use my Jedi levitation skills. So today, I'm gonna make him think that he just won the lottery. <laughs> How in the world did you pull this off? Rahat. I don't know nothing. I don't know. Rahat seems kind of fishy. I'm not just gonna give him a thousand and just walk away and say, hey, have a great day. <laughs> That was not part of the plan. It is indeed a good deed prank. <laughs> Rahad needs to be brought to justice. Rahad didn't steal that money. Good deeds on camera or exploiting people as props. Rahad ain't all Rahad was cut out to be. God bless. God bless you. Thank you. Oh! Oh! See, Rahat, thank you so much, my friend. It was terrific. <laughs> I was never allowed to draw, withdraw money out of that account. What the heck did I sign up for? One creator story that has perhaps always intrigued me more than any other is that of OG YouTuber Rahat Hossein, better known to most as the magic of Rahat, the self-titled magician prankster. While many have covered part of Rahat's story mainly revolving around the scandalous reason why he left YouTube, no one has quite covered his rise on the platform and his journey to becoming one of the top pranksters on the site. While Rahat left YouTube abruptly in a cloud of controversy over two years ago and hasn't been heard from since, his impact on the site as one of the first big creators to start the trend of money giveaways is something that he doesn't often receive credit for. And while this would ultimately lead to his downfall, there is a loose argument that without Rahat, Mr. Beast's big money giveaways may not exist. So this video will be a short YouTube history lesson into a creator that was not only a trendsetter, but was the inspiration for many videos we see today, and the story that followed him would eventually take one of the biggest twists in YouTube history. Modern magic as a form of entertainment has always been in the public eye. So naturally when YouTube started to find its feet as the main website for online entertainment, a gap emerged for magicians to step up to the plate. Enter the magic of Rahat. He joined the site midway through 2007, and initially the uploads to his channel were basic card and magic tricks shown to camera. The appeal of common magic tricks didn't quite translate over the internet and growth was slow. It would take just under four years for the channel to gain 5,000 subscribers. However, Rahat would soon experience his first small spell of YouTube attention and growth. His inspiration was Merton, the chat roulette musician. She raised her eyebrows in surprise. Her friend had shades on, so you couldn't see her eyes. As Chat Roulette continued to grow in popularity in 2011, Rahat decided to take Merton's format and perform his magic tricks on Chat Roulette. He would upload four of these Chat Roulette magic trick videos and they would all gain tens of thousands of views and at that time became his most watched videos on the channel by far. Sorry about that. This was the start of a complete change in direction in the type of content he would post. His next style of video would become his legacy on the site and would help spark a trend that became hugely popular on YouTube, the drive through prank. While most drive through pranks we know of today usually involve something along the lines of the prankster dropping or squeezing an ice cream cone when the server hands them their order, Rahat's drive through pranks had something slightly different to the rest. He effectively combined three genres into one video, 
magic, pranks, and reactions. Now, with most pranksters' content, the viewer is focused on watching the performer. But with Rahat, the main focus wasn't so much on the performer, but more so on the reaction of the person he was performing the magic trick on. It was here that Rahat was able to separate himself from the rest of the pranksters and would eventually build his success. I have a brownie, 138. Yep. Oh, 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 oh whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. How did your wallet get on fire? I think it was the moon hitting the windshield. It's kind of like a forest fire, like the sun yeah. hitting it. He would take basic magic tricks you could buy online and use them in his videos. The tricks would change every so often to things like floating cups or money, but the format of performing them in a drive through or in his car remained the same. However, one video would change Rahat's life forever. Whether you know who he is or not, the chances are you will have seen his invisible driver prank. What I'm gonna do with this costume is I'm gonna put it on and I'm gonna go through a drive through And uh, I'm gonna show you how it looks in the inside of the car with this costume on. So this is how the costume looks while I'm wearing it. And um, let's see how people react when a car with no driver rolls up to their drive through window. Yo! With 55 million views as of 2020, it's up there with some of the most successful and recognized prank videos ever posted on YouTube. Within a week of the video being uploaded, Rahat had been invited onto the Ellen DeGeneres show as a result of the video going viral. Our next guest has brought pranking to a new level. He created a car seat costume and surprised unsuspecting drive through employees. If you haven't seen the video yet, here is some of that footage, along with some other footage that he shot for us. Hey Ellen, it's Rahat. Thank you for bringing me out here in sunny California. Let's see how people here react to the invisible driver prank. Let's do this. Hey guys, hey, <laughs> how are you? Due to the newfound fame and attention off the back of his appearance on Ellen, his channel experienced a huge boost in growth. The video gained 30 million views in its first month, and the channel gained over 1 million subscribers in that time. Rahat signed for the multi-channel network Maker Studios shortly thereafter and quickly became one of the most in-demand YouTubers for brands to work with. Deals with Universal, Snickers, Target, and a lucrative deal with Toyota all came in off the back of the newfound fame. Rahat continued to upload his usual drive through pranks to great success, and with Maker Studios now behind him, the size of the productions were able to grow, giving Rahat a chance to up the stakes with the illusions. Alongside the drive through pranks, Rahat had always given away small amounts of money in his videos. Let me give you a hundred dollar bill, man. Hey man, love I'm you. being serious too. Okay, love you, man. Yeah, I love you too, man. Hey, look. No. Okay. Hey man, I'll give you a hug, man. All right. I love you, great. I love you too, man. Okay. All right. Man. I'm Jack, man. All right, man. I'm real hot, man. Nice to meet okay. you, dude. In April of 2013, he uploaded a video in collaboration with fellow prankster Jack Vale. In the video, they throw money from a balcony into a small square below where people rush to grab as much as they can. While the amount given away in the video is relatively small, this is one of the early examples on the platform of a larger creator making videos around monetary giveaways. Between 2013 and 2014, a few of the bigger prankster channels started making videos revolving around homeless people, and initially it was makeovers and giving small amounts of money away to them, but Rahat would take these homeless giveaways to a whole new level and grab the attention of news headlines around the world. In March of 2014, Rahat uploaded a video called Homeless Lottery Winner. This is the story of a homeless man. <laughs> who got pranked with a losing lottery ticket. So today, I'm gonna make him think that he just won the lottery. I do have this 
winning lottery ticket. That's cool, my friend. They head for a nearby deli to cash in the ticket as the clerk counts out Nine, ten hundreds. Nine, ten, okay. The man stares at the cash, stunned into silence, and then... I want to share it, my friend. Oh, come on, that's all yours, man. I was really, really thrown off because I... Did not really expect somebody to do that. When Rahat insists he keep all of the money, the camera mounted on Rahat's sunglasses catches the eyes of the homeless guy welling up. Here. <laughs> and when they were done hugging, <laughs> it wasn't just the homeless man who had to wipe his eyes. Though most think the video is touching, some have qualms. Good deeds on camera or exploiting people as props. I'm not just going to give him a thousand and just walk away and say, hey, have a great day. Rahat set up a fundraising site for Eric. In less than a day, it totaled over $6,000 and counting. Eric didn't win the lotto, but he did hit the jackpot. <laughs> Ginimo, CNN, New York. The fundraiser that Rahat set up for Eric eventually totaled just over $60,000. As a result of the money raised, Rahat's next idea for a video was the first of its kind on YouTube and took the homeless giveaways to completely new grounds. Rahat's video titled Homeless Man Gets a Home was unlike anything that had been seen before on YouTube and the outpour of help for Eric was so incredible that with the money raised, Rahat showed how he could rent a small house out for one year for Eric to live in. So, I gotta be honest with you. This isn't really my house. This is your house. Once again, the video went viral and the incredible story of what Rahat did hit the news headlines around the world. With 45 million views as of August 2020, it remains as one of the most successful giveaway videos of all time, and it was here that the bar was raised when it came to the Helping the Homeless videos on YouTube. Their friendship continued to grow, and Rahat posted videos on his second channel showing how he helped Eric move into his new home and took him shopping for clothes and groceries. However, things weren't all they seemed. Rahat continued to post his normal type of videos over the next few years and gradually made his way to the 5 million subscriber mark and we never saw Eric again in any of the videos. That is until four years later when a channel called Etube posted a video in early 2018 called Magic of Rahat Homeless Lottery Winner Eric Update. So let me ask you this, in his video he said that you have a joint bank account with him do you have any access to that money? No, I don't. Did you have any access in the past to that money? No. He always had control of the entire account. He never gave me, never even gave me access. Every time I wanted money, he got money out of the account. I was never allowed to draw, withdraw money out of that account. I just wanted you to know that Rahat ain't all Rahat was cut out to be. I mean, where is this money? I never got access to this fundraiser. So, what exactly happened to the money? It would take four months for Rahat to respond to the claims in two Twitter posts which have since been deleted. Rahat claimed that Eric was lying and that he could prove it with bank statements which he was going to get the next day as proof. The proof never came and since then, Rahat has not posted again on any of his social media channels and has absolutely no traceable digital footprint. While it's one man's word against another, Rahat's silence could perhaps be the biggest indicator of guilt. However, we may never know exactly what happened with the money. The story wasn't reported on greatly by the usual YouTube community drama channels like Drama Alert and Scarce, and as a result, it went slightly unnoticed to many. However, if Eric's claims are ever proven to be true, that Rahat stole the remaining amount of money from the fundraiser, it could perhaps be considered up there as one of the biggest sins ever committed by a YouTuber. While many large YouTubers have come and gone, none have vanished without a trace in the way Rahat did. He created a show for Kevin Hart's LOL Network in mid-2018, which aired a year and a half later in 2019, and that was the last time we saw Rahat. He's a bigger part of YouTube's history than many may realize, and with over 1.2 billion views and nearly 7 million subscribers to his channel as of 2020, 
he is one of the largest inactive channels on the site. Yet despite his incredible success on YouTube and his appearances in the mainstream media, there's been no sightings of him in public anywhere. No pictures from fans on social media, he's just vanished completely off the grid. Google searches throw up nothing and a look down the comments sections on his last few uploads from 2018 throw a theory into the mix that he was arrested and could now be in prison, but as to be expected these are probably just claims with no basis. While there are next to no connections to Rahat anywhere online, one stroke of luck allowed me to find Rahat's old cameraman from his earlier days on the site. A young guy named Tremaine who used to run his own YouTube prank channel called Trey Pranks. I decided to reach out for an interview. Hi Trey, I really appreciate you uh, joining me on the Zoom call today. Thanks very much. So there's, uh, there's a lot of theories, you know, trying to track him down and look in, in the comments section of his last few uploads. There's a lot of uh, comments underneath, he's been arrested and, and he's in prison and things like that. Can you speak to, to any of that? Is, is there any truth to, to that stuff? Uh, not at all, though those are all falsifications that have you know, grown from the, uh, the depths of the internet. Rahad is alive and well. Um, he is not in jail, he is, he, he is not in prison, he is not dead, um, he, he is doing just fine. One of the, the reasons it seems like he left was to do with Eric and the, the homeless uh, giveaway video. And I know that you were involved in the production of that. So what happened there? Yeah, so, you know, Raha and I released the homeless lottery winner video. I think that was sometime in 2014 or 15. I can't remember. But uh, we set the fundraiser up and we raised, I think, $43,000 for Eric. And everything that was in that video is legit because I was there during the entire time behind the scenes. Um, I was 18 at the time, I believe, and Raha didn't let me in on the financials of it. Um, he, what he informed me is that, hey, you know, I'm going to make a joint bank account with Eric and he'll have access to the money and I'll have monitoring over it. And uh, from, from my understanding is that Eric was being very harassing to Rahat, asking him for more and more money of that pot. And Rahat eventually got tired of it and relinquished the entire account to Eric. But I can say one thing, Rahat is a great guy. Uh, Rahat didn't need to steal $43,000 from this Eric guy. I, like I said, I saw everything. We got him the house, we gave him the lease, we gave him the keys, everything was legit. Um, Rahat did not need that money. It's public information. Anybody can go in there and see his subscriber counts and see his video views and match up the revenue. Rahat was making good money. We were doing partnerships with brands and deals. Uh, to, for people to think that he needed that $43,000, they are completely out of their minds, I should say. So I just ask people to use critical thinking. But I can say from the bottom of my heart, Rahat didn't steal that money. At least that's what I feel. I don't know the truth. But I know Rahat's character. The guy is a great guy. He wouldn't need to steal that money. Sure. That's really interesting to hear. I mean, from a perspective of, of, of the outside, of course, his silence is what perhaps makes a lot of people feel like he is guilty. And I, I just want to sort of get an update as to, to where he is as well and trying to track him down. And I don't know if you're able to, to add anything to that in terms of the last time you spoke to Rahat or where he is now. Out of respect for him, he's somewhere on the East Coast of the United States. Um, he, he is doing very well and uh, he, he's living a very private life, obviously, as you all may know. And um, he, he's doing okay. The last time I spoke to him is in April. So once again, he's not dead, he's not in jail. <laughs> so a really interesting chat with Tremaine throws a few spanners into the works as to what happened to the money and whether a hat was actually as guilty as the masses believed him to be. However, with very little being revealed as to his whereabouts, after hours of searching, I finally managed to find him on social media. I reached out on a couple of platforms but was met with silence, and then I realised that perhaps that was what I deserved. I'd actively been trying to find someone that didn't want to be found and managed to do it, and in the end, it felt wrong. The fact that he has changed his name on social media therefore shows that he doesn't want to be contacted or found, and therefore, I feel it necessary to respect that. However, it doesn't really help the video or bring it to a real conclusion, so what I can say as a vague update for those wondering where Rahat is now, he seems to be doing well, he still lives in West Virginia, where it seems that he invests in property and runs a successful chain of cafes. 
So to bring this video to an end, Rahat was such a huge creator at one point, he influenced the site well beyond what he's given credit for, and while the channel got a bit lazy towards the end with constant drive through pranks, his videos always had more thought and more entertainment value to them than your typical prankster. He helped to popularise drive through pranks and money giveaways and certainly took the helping the homeless trend well beyond what anyone else had done at that time, so much so that Mr Beast completely replicated Rahat's exact video on his own channel. That shows the impact and influence that Rahat has on the site even to this day. So there's no doubt he was a pioneer with his videos to an extent and his journey to the top by being regularly featured in the mainstream media for positive reasons is a rarity for a YouTuber to experience. Unfortunately, while we still don't know the full story and probably never will, it would seem from the outside in that a very silly decision based on greed led to his downfall and completely destroyed his reputation and legacy. His story is quite incredible and while he isn't often considered as an important creator in YouTube's history, perhaps he should be simply based on the impact he had in helping to start trends that are still popular to this day. So following in the footsteps of many magicians before him, Rahat's final trick truly was the disappearing act from which he never returned. Thanks very much for watching and if you enjoyed this video then please be sure to check out some of my others on the channel or hit subscribe for more content. Thanks very much for watching.